boy, the times they are a changin'. It seems that Madam Web has unleashed the Kraken. Movie studios are finally starting to get why their attempts at pandering to women have failed. Could it have had something to do with the way their female characters were written? Or could it be something deeper? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dumpster fire that is modern Hollywood. The disastrous series of massive flops that we've been seeing over the past few years during the dark age of cinema have started piling up. Projects like The Rings of Power, Peter Pan and Wendy, Ahsoka, She-Hulk, Resident Evil, Robin Hood, The Witcher, The Marvels, and most recently Madam Web. The combined financial loss of all these movies and shows now totals in the billions of dollars. The normies have known this for quite a while, but now the mainstream media is finally starting to take notice. I love this quote from The Hollywood Reporter. From a North American distributor on Wednesday night, you can actually watch advanced ticket sales declining in real time as buyers were refunding their tickets. The point is, when a huge flop like this happens, the mainstream media, at the behest of the studio and the money men, tends to scramble to find an acceptable excuse. With Madam Web, even a tool like Chris Stuckman struggled to find a reason to watch this film. In the case of The Hollywood Reporter, though, it seems that they have made an admission about the film's target audience that no one really expected. The article continues, I don't know if women are enough to carry the box office here, one studio veteran source outside of Sony says. So at this point, it's a good idea for me to put on my Peter Zahan hat on for a second and take a look at demographics. Males make up 65-70% to 70 of the superhero audience in North America. In the case of Madam Web, the percentage of female viewers fell just below 50%. There is a bit of nuance to understand here, though. Madam Web was a superhero movie specifically designed to appeal to a female audience. It's got a female lead, a group of female supporting characters, a female director, and an entire female writing team. And guess what? None of it helped. Women didn't turn out to see it. The Marbles had the exact same problem months ago. That film had three female leads, a female director, and a female writing team. And what happened to it? The male audience was put off by a movie that berated men every chance that it got. It basically put up a sign that said, No Men Allowed here, like the No Homers Club. Hey, Billy! Hey, Joey! Come on in! There's plenty of room! Sorry, not you, Homer. Why not? But you let in Homer Glumplet. <laughs> it says no Homers. We're allowed to have one. The much-anticipated female audience failed to show up for the Marvels, and as a result, it was the biggest box office flop in MCU history. So what did these two films have in common? Well, I believe that South Park has already answered this question, but let's have a refresher, shall we? Both of these films tried to pander to an audience that was never going to see them in the first place. It's actually funny reading articles in the mainstream media or observing posts from the normies on Twitter. They simply refuse to see the picture right in front of them. They'd much rather stick their heads in the sand rather than face the harsh reality punching them in the face. But what's the inconvenient truth here that normies as well as the woke crowd refuses to see? Men and women are interested in different things. I know it may be a shock to some of you, dear viewers, but that's a cold, hard fact. And facts don't care about your feelings. Let's keep going down the Peter Zahan rabbit hole and look at even more demographics. Breaking down box office statistics, we see that women make up 85% of audiences for romance movies and 70% for musicals. Men, on the other hand, make up 70% of the audience for superhero movies, 75% for action movies, and 65% for science fiction and fantasy films. This graph from the British Film Institute breaks down the preferred genres for men and women, and you can clearly see the difference in preference between them. That's not a good or bad thing, but it is a thing that movie studios should pay attention to. Instead, they've been doing the exact opposite in recent years. They seem to regard audience demographics as a problem that needs to be fixed. They're trying to force people to like something they're not genetically predisposed to like. 
In the case of big box office franchises like Marvel, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, and Star Trek, which naturally tend to skew towards a male audience, they made a conscious decision to tell more stories with female leads. On the surface, there's nothing wrong with having female characters or even female leads. It all comes down to how well it's written, how well the plot flows, how well the character develops throughout the course of the story. But instead of writing relatable feminine characters that complemented existing male characters, the writers treated it like a divisive competition. How many times have I already said this so far on my channel? Men and women are not in competition with one another. They complement each other like pieces of a puzzle. Viewing gender through the lens of competition is flawed, and it creates division, hate, and terrible cinema. A story about a female protagonist learning to free herself from the oppressive demands of others and discover her true potential is a perfectly viable story to tell. The problems creep in when that becomes the only story that you ever tell. The lazy writers of Hollywood kept recycling the stereotypical male traits and pouring them into female characters, which completely failed in winning any audience. Men were generally put off by the overbearing, aggressive, infallible Mary Sue girl bosses who seemed to be written purely to show off and humiliate their weak beta male counterparts. While women failed to connect with them, either because they represented masculine ideals that didn't come naturally to them in a genre that most of them didn't particularly care for in the first place. So to recap, Hollywood has wasted billions of dollars chasing an audience that doesn't exist, a demand that failed to materialize. And throughout all this time during the dark age of cinema, they've gradually pushed away the remaining audience that they did have. On the other hand, look at what happens when you actually understand your target audience and make a film that caters specifically to them. Barbie was the biggest hit of 2023, and even though I personally thought it was a movie that lacked a coherent message, it doesn't matter because the movie wasn't made for me. It was made specifically for women. Now take a look at Top Gun Maverick. This was a movie that was primarily aimed at men, incorporating masculine tropes and themes that men traditionally find appealing. Action, explosions, fighter jets, the military, and macho conflict and competition. This was a movie made for men, not women. Both of these films achieved massive success because they understood their core audience and how to appeal to them. Now, imagine what would have happened if studios tried to incorporate elements that appealed to the opposite gender. Like if Barbie's colorful exploration of female identity, empowerment, and self-actualization was interrupted by big macho action scenes with guns and explosions? Or what about if Top Gun Maverick devoted lengthy sequences to a female pilot lamenting how difficult it is to gain respect in a male-dominated profession while maintaining her sense of feminine identity? In both cases, the core target audience would have been turned off. If you want to have strong female characters, they have to be done right. I've already mentioned characters of the past like Sarah Connor, Ripley, and Lara Croft, but there is a very modern example of a strong female character done well, and that's Beth Dutton in the hit series Yellowstone. In every episode, she presents herself, for the lack of a better word, like a mean bitch who doesn't take any shit from anyone. But rather than be simple and one-dimensional, through careful exposition, we find out her vulnerabilities. We find out why she became so disillusioned and calloused. Without that elaborate exposition, Beth Dutton would have fallen into the Mary Sue trap that so many of these studios have fallen into. The thing is, I think this is finally starting to sink in with Hollywood studio execs. Maybe not the creatives, but definitely the ones financing the whole operation. Now, as I mentioned in my last two videos, the first domino to fall is Silk Spider Society, a female-centric Spider-Man spinoff in development at Amazon Prime. According to the press releases, the entire writing team's been fired and the show is being reworked with a more male-centric audience in mind. Now, this might not sound like much of a big deal, but it is, 
because it's the first time that a studio had the balls to publicly declare that they're targeting a project towards a male audience. It's the first time that anyone in Hollywood's openly admitted that what they've been pushing on us for the past decade and a half just isn't working. No matter how much money they throw at it, they're coming to the realization that you simply can't make every single movie appeal to every single person. It's a basic law of economics. It's called consumer preference. You can't shift consumer preference and any corporation that tried failed. Just ask Anheuser-Busch. They've tried so hard to attract female audiences into male-dominated genres and their clumsy pandering just doesn't work and never will. So now that we know the pendulum is swinging back the other way, what's going to happen now? If they want to win back old fans and restore a bit of balance, franchises like Marvel, Star Wars, DC, and Star Trek can still have kick-ass female heroes going on exciting adventures. They just need to be written well. They need to be written more like actual human beings with believable flaws and weaknesses and challenges to overcome, like normal humans. Yellowstone's Beth Dutton is the prime example of how to do it correctly. She's not overbearing, obnoxious, nor does she have any power fantasies that nobody can identify with. She defends her father and her father's best interests. Once he dies, she'd love nothing more than to sell the ranch and move on with her life. That's a character anyone can identify with, even if they don't own a multi-billion dollar ranch. Female characters need to be balanced out by equally strong and capable male heroes that appeal to male audiences because, believe it or not, those are the driving forces behind your box office profit. They need characters who can actually challenge and push the females to be better who don't automatically give way to them at the slightest sign of conflict instead of the neutered beta male cucks that we've been getting, who are always portrayed as less smart, less skilled, less confident, and just inferior in general. After more than a decade of trying to make it work and creating the dark age of cinema we found ourselves in, I think it's about time to accept that the great woke experiment has been a complete failure. You're not going to get equal proportions of women to watch science fiction or action or superhero movies. Just like you're not going to get equal proportions of men to watch romance movies or musicals. The girl boss concept is dead. You might not like it, but your audience is your audience and they have spoken. And if you don't start catering to them, you might just find that they no longer exist and maybe neither will you. But what do you guys think of all this? Do you think that Madame Webb signaled the end of toxic feminism in the reign of Mary Sue's? Or has the lesson not been completely beaten into Hollywood? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.